All right, in this video, we're taking a look at the Beta FPV Beta 85 Pro. This is the Express LRS edition. So uh, more or less, it's I think it's pretty much the same as the FreeSky or other receiver, or not or plug and play or non-receiver version, except now it has Express LRS on board. You can see you've got the antenna here in the back with their new little TPU antenna holder. And this one here has the dipole antenna, not the uh, SMD antenna, the little, little tiny antenna that's surface mounted. And uh, same frame, looks like the frame hasn't changed. Uh, I believe the motors are the same as well. 1103, yeah, 11,000 kV motors. Uh, I think the previous generation may have used a different prop. This is the new gem fan, four bladed props. I think when this first came out, this prop wasn't around. I did switch the battery uh, strap to a sideways orientation. The stock was front and frontwards and backwards. Um, just because I like the, the way that feels better. They did send along this uh, 300 milliamp hour 1S or 2S battery, because this is a 2S board and 2S setup versus the Beta 75 and Beta 65 Pros are both 1S. And uh, I haven't gotten around to the 65 yet. If you're wondering about that, let me know in the comments. Uh, I might move that video up. But this was sent along. I don't think this is included. You have to buy this separately, but this is the battery they're recommending. I think this is what they tuned it for. I also flew it on a 2S 450 for a little bit more flight time and a little bit heavier. I think it actually flies a little, little bit better on this. Um, I'll show you a little bit of what that flight looks like here in the corner. I actually did the narrated flight on the, the stock battery or the one they sent along. I did a video on the the new board, the Express Alaris board in here already. You can see here's what the board looks like. Um, but you can see that the USB, which is a or the USB port, say USB type C comes on this plug right there so you can't lose this otherwise you're gonna have uh, you know some issues um, changing your settings but yeah this is what the board inside looks like and yeah I did a video on this one all right it's 12 amp with the Express Alaris receiver built in and this is an SPI receiver so if you're looking for the old style with the built-in receiver um, uh, that's not SPI that has the basically it's using a UART they you know the, the reason they don't see that is so they wanted to shrink the board down and the reason they went with SPI is they can get rid of the um, what I think it's called the ESP controller MSP it's like a, basically another processing unit that um, the Express LRS uses and where the firmware is stored and you can get rid of those chips and, and basically you know, make the board smaller as what they was essentially what they did. Otherwise the board would have to be bigger like the um toothpick version, the one S version that came before this. Uh that's that's the advantage of the SPI uh versions is that you can shrink down the components or get rid of some components and they offload that um uh Express LRS firmware into the beta flight firmware that's sitting in the main flight controller um uh, I guess in the ROM or the or the, wherever the where the where the firmware sits, the programming when you flash beta flight, and so that's why when you want to update Express LRS on these SPI boards, uh, you have to update beta flight, and um, I, everyone's waiting for 3.4 or 4.3 to come out, I guess. And there's some nightly versions out there right now. It's a bit convoluted, so I haven't made a video about that yet, and I don't recommend flashing these boards to make the upgrade because it is really I've done it a couple times and it's I've um yeah it, it's difficult to do it correctly if you and I kind of know what I'm doing so I would recommend not flashing these boards if you want to get the latest nightly 4.3 on here because it doesn't really make much of a difference in terms of performance it seems to be the same in my opinion so I recommend just staying away from that until the official 4.3 comes out um, later on and I'll make a video on that later. Anyway, that's what the board looks like. It's in there So I'm not gonna take it apart to Show you that and this is the you know connector that came with which goes right there in the side So, you know, obviously you know, You're gonna fly around with this. So you know, saving a little bit of weight there, but let's see how much this weighs now So it's coming in at uh, 45 point about 45.6 grams, and then with uh, 300 all together, 
it's about 66.6 grams and then with the four uh, with a 450 and we're coming in at a 73.7 anyway nothing really that shocking about this one um, compared to my original review it's very fast uh, it's um, yeah actually uh, it's not sure why it's so much faster and you know, maybe I just haven't flown one of these like 2s like power whoops in a while which is why I flew it outside you can fly these indoors as well but this is uh, super fast for the size and so you'll need a bigger space if you're going to want to try and fly some of this indoors uh, but it's very agile um, the tune could be a little better on the 300 I thought it flew better on the 450 and you can get it can get more power out of the battery because um, these 11,000 kV motors do suck quite a, a bit of um, amps out of the battery. So you'll need some good quality batteries if you want to be doing tricks and stuff like that. But anyway, now uh, here's the narrated flight and you guys can judge for yourself what you think of the performance and the pit tune and all that. Um, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Alright, so this thing's kind of fast. Whoa. Uh, it's a little faster than I expected. I haven't flown uh, one of these in this class in a while. Alright, try and just get used to how this flies. It's not that loud. You can probably hear like all the other ambient noise over this. All right, the rates are way high. Yeah, so this uh, is, could use lower rates and a lot of exp more, more expo. Could try and dial that in, make this uh, a little smoother. It's a little bit of a wind. And I'm already getting a little battery warning. Whoa, <laughs> that's the wind pushing it back. And I'm getting a little battery warning. It's a pretty small battery for the KV of the motor. And everything you're not going to get a super long flight time could try like a 450 but then you know you lose like the the agility and the responsiveness the tune is a little wobbly too could you could use a tighter pid tune But yeah, this obviously this is why I flew it outside because this thing I knew it was going to be fast, but it's a little faster than I was expecting it to be. And already the battery is just about dead. Here we can try and squeeze out a little bit from not pushing it so much. But uh, yeah, about two and a half minutes on the 300 milliamp hour 2S.